again, so here we are with another battle report and something I have been waiting to do for a long time. Haven't played much recently, so maybe a bit rusty on some of the rules, but obviously just comment below. Um, that's the best way to learn. Um, so just run AD through a little quick demo and he's uh, going to be uh, playing me today at Saga. Yeah. And the Age of the Vikings. So, with that in mind, I'm going to be running my Viking list, and uh, AD is borrowing my Normans. However, after the Bullshit. demo, <laughs> he's already gone and bought all the rule books and everything. So, fingers crossed, uh, we'll get a good game for you. A little different format to what a lot of the stuff out on YouTube is for this game, which tends to be a bit more pictorial. So, we're going to do a full live battle report for you. I'm uh, going to edit it down and clean it down as much as you can to get the uh, time condensed. However, we are going to be playing uh, Guard the Loot. Um, so, effectively, it's a six point battle between Normans. Hello, Norman. Bosh <laughs> Okay. And uh, Vikings. So, um, basically, um, well, you're Rolo. Yeah, yeah. And I'm Ragnar. Hopefully, Rolo comes victorious yeah, today. Yeah, well, we'll see. I'm going to throw him under a bus. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, Scenario is guard the loot, as we said. Um, effectively, we're in England, uh, so Vikings are uh, well, it could be in France actually. Saying that, we've got a little uh, Norman keep in one corner of the battlefield, and the Vikings want to basically come and try and steal your ladies, yeah, yeah, gold, yeah. and, and we're gonna whatever else we can fit on a boat. <laughs> yeah, because that's what we do. And we're going to try our best to uh, stab him with loads of spears. Okay. Right, so what we will do, we will show you the battlefield and the armies and then we'll get straight into it. Game is going to last for five turns. At the end of the fifth turn, we will roll a dice on a five plus, we get a sixth turn. Uh, we'll show you um, basically as much as we can of the battle board, uh, that kind of thing, as we go through. And hopefully, if there's any questions, again, put them below and we'll do our best to answer them. Okay, so um, get on with it then. Yeah, let's so good go luck. For it. Good luck, mate. All right, let's get doing it. Right then, so here we have the battlefield we're playing over. So we've got a bit of rolling English hillside with uh, some protruding rocks. Not a very Bradgate Park feel to it, if anyone's yeah, yeah, familiar yeah. with the Midlands. Okay. There's old John. Uh, old John there, look, over in the corner. And uh, we've got a cattle shed and a little residence there as well. Okay, so all the uh, tokens are down. Um, we have to deploy uh, four uh, objectives each side uh, and letter them A to D. We don't know at the moment what we're fighting for. So this is one where uh, at the end of the game, roll a dice and see what objective was actually the objective you're after. So uh, yeah, it could be interesting. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at the Normans first. So um, over here, we have a unit of warriors in the red, in the green, another unit of warriors. And then we have a unit of hearth guard on foot, uh, the warlord on the single mount, another unit of half guard, this time with uh, Dane axes, another unit of warriors next to the cattle shed, and then the other side of the cattle shed, we have a mounted unit of hearth guard, and that is six points of Normans. Okay. So the uh, rocky areas are going to be rough ground, everything else is fairly open and uh, we have a stream which uh, to all intents and purposes probably isn't going to get used as no objectives over there so we're just going to class that as impassable terrain. The fort's actually a different baron's fort so uh, he shut his doors up as the vikings are here. So uh, let's have a look at the other end of the board. Okay so coming down the, uh, the hills we have a unit of Vikings just there. It's one unit. Then I have another unit of Warrior Vikings. We then have the Warlord and a unit of Berserkers just behind him, which are the only half guard in this Viking list. We then have another unit of eight Warriors going further along the hill there. Another unit of eight Warriors. And on the other side of the valley we have a unit of levies armed with 
missile weapons, so a mix of slings and bows, just because that's what I've got. Okay, so um, they're up there on the hill there. Okay, so there we have it. The battlefield is uh, set, and we are ready to go. Uh, the Normans have first turn, so they'll be rolling three saga dice. Okay, so turn one, uh, Normans only get the three dice, and um, I've decided to activate uh, the knights and two of the sergeants. Okay, so uh, obviously uh, we'll be back to you with the action. Okay, so turn one ended on movement for the Normans, as we're quite a distance apart, having started M in on the battlefield. Um, the knights have taken advantage of their speed and have moved up to... Uh, the uh, hovel. The rest of the army either used the activation dice or the get into the battle option, uh, which is the free move if they're more than 12 away. So uh, they've moved forward in a line. And we're over to the Viking turn. Okay, so uh, Viking turn one, and the battle board looks like that. Uh, we did get uh, an activation pull, so we managed to get an extra dice out. And I'm going to rely on just advancing my troops with the free move. So I've filled my board with um, reactions mainly. Um, okay, so all of the Vikings have advanced to take up uh, positions closer into the battlefield and secure their own objectives. Okay, so Norman turn two. Battle board. So a few more dice this time, and uh, let's see what AD decides to do with those. Okay, so here we have the Normans at the end of uh, Norman turn two. The knights have used their out of action move to travel further up, and uh, they couldn't go the full distance as they were going to get within 12 of the warlord and the Vikings, so and they had to jink a little bit by using two M's just to get around the rough ground. Uh, over here, half guard uh, advanced as well, and uh, the Norman commander then gave them the We Obey advance, so they gained a fatigue, but a bit further up, and everybody else is uh, just bimbling forward. Okay, so uh, that is the end of Norman turn two, and there are dice left on the board. Okay, so uh, Viking turn two battle board, and we have uh, one in for the Herdman, uh, two for the Bondi, two for the Thralls, and then we also have Njord, Frigg, and Heimdall on the board. Okay, so let's uh, see what develops. Okay, so first action is the Thralls have moved off their hill down into the ground and have then activated again for a second time to gain fatigue uh, to shoot the advancing hearth guard. In return, uh, AD has played wounded, so if the half guard take any casualties, uh, my uh, levies or thralls will take an extra fatigue. So let's see what, how we get on. So we're looking for fours, and uh, we'll reroll that one because it's not flat. So that is five hits, so that's a good start. And uh, oh no, it's not, sorry, uh, only four hits, so I need fives. And all save bar one. So one of the uh, one of my one of the half guard dies, uh, but it does mean that the uh, thralls take an extra fatigue due to the board ability. Okay, so movement wise, uh, the Bondi unit has advanced towards the oncoming Norman cavalry. Uh, the warlord and the berserkers have moved up as well. Uh, so a couple of things happened here, um, the Bondi activated normally, the Warlord um, basically moved up, used his Wii Obey and also popped Njord, which removed a fatigue that they'd already obtained. Uh, so they were now fresh going in because they needed effectively three actions to get into combat, so they've now got a fatigue again and uh, we enter into combat. So the Warriors have gone in, uh, they've popped Frigg. Uh, to remove their uh, fatigue and then they've also popped Heimdall uh, which uh, has given them an extra five dice but they have uh, reduced their armor by one. 
So we'll roll it out and see how we get on. Normans are going to be hitting on threes now. Go for it. Uh, okay, so All six hits. And we'll roll the saves. This is simultaneous. I'd just like to do it this way so it's straightforward. So, um, so four ups. And, oh, hello. Lose one. So lose one. One Bondi dies. Now, because of the um, activation or the uh, saga ability, the Vikings are rolling 12 dice against half guard cavalry. So, fours. Um, so, average. And that is three, six, seven saves you need to make on four ups. And that is three. I lose dead. three. So that's three Normans taken down for the loss of only one Viking. Okay, so the end of Viking turn two. Um, after um, recovery moves have taken place. Uh, Vikings who are holding D have moved on to E as it's worth more points. Um, the levy, remember on the left hand side, have now got double fatigue. And everything else is pretty much advanced forward. And the Viking Bondi there um, got a fatigue. Mm, two activations away from the next nearest unit, so not quite so worried about that. But I do, don't have anything on my board at all. And then the lonely Norman Knight there. Okay, so turn three, uh, Norman battle board is looking like this. Just remember, um, although the uh, Norman cavalry lost three, because uh, they're half guard, for those that aren't uh, overly familiar with the rules, they still generate their order dice. Um, so uh, no doubt he'll be running off and sitting on objective for the rest of the game. But let's see what AD does. Okay, so towards the um, back end of uh, Norman turn three, and... Uh, AD and his uh, soldiers have uh, just pulled off a move. So he's double activated the warriors to gain fatigue and then he's popped pursuit, which allows them to do a charge without taking any fatigue. So they are going to charge into the levy, are they? Yeah, they are. Yep, yeah. So they're charging into the levy. Okay. So we have 11 dice from the Normans and six from the levy. So the levy have used the fatigue of the Normans, drop their defence, of which the Normans have put their defence up one, so that equals itself out, and then the levy unfortunately had an extra fatigue, which has meant that uh, now the Normans are hitting on twos, so let's see what happens. No uh, couple so ones in there. Two. So, so nine. Okay. Nine, three, six, nine. So the levies are looking for fours to save. Ooh. And fail four. So five. Is it five? One, One two, two, three, yep. four, five. Five, five. So three, four, and five. Okay. In return, the levies have six dice back, hitting on fours. Uh, only two. And one. do take one of the knights, uh, one of the warriors down. Uh, so the levy clearly lost that one. Uh, both units gain fatigue, and the Viking levy will break off. Okay, so Viking turn three at the halfway stage, and uh, got a lot of activations. And we've got one on Frigg and one on Thor, and uh, the battlefield is uh, looking like this. Okay, so uh, what are the Vikings going to do? Uh, the first thing they're going to do is the levy are uh, going to open fire onto the Normans. Okay, so the levy managed to kill one of the warriors. And fortunately, he pops wounded, and the levy are now set on two fatigue. Okay, so the Viking uh, Bondi have charged into the uh, slightly weakened Normans. They have used the fatigue against them in order to uh, drop their defence to threes. They've popped Thrig and Four uh, in order to uh, basically uh, increase their attacks. So we're looking at threes and sixes count as double. So two, four, six, six seven, eight, nine, ten to save. 
and that's going to be three casualties. So just move three out for the time being. And then I'm going to pop you with six back. Yep. And you're on fours. Nothing. Uh, nothing. Oh dear. Shooting. Okay. Okay, so the Warlords We Obey has forced the uh, Bondi into try and finish off the unit of Normans just there. And they've popped their fatigue in order to put the Viking defence up one. And the Vikings have hit with six. So you need six saves, but you've only got three guys, so you're going to need to save at least four. Uh, nope, so they're going to be wiped out, but they do get their three attacks back. Uh, but they're now hitting on fives. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, so that unit is popped. And I gain an extra fatigue. Okay, so turn four battle board for the Normans. Here we go. Okay, so the We Obey from the Norman Warlord to the Hearthguard. Three of them have charged the eight strong Bondi. Okay, so the Norman players decided not to use any of the fatigue. Six dice, and you're looking for fours. I'm looking for fives. Uh, three hits. So let's see if we can save those. And we lose one. And then eight dice back. Looking for fives. Uh, three. Well, I want fours, do uh, Yeah, fours to save. And one. one. So one guy each. Well, I and it's a draw. Fatigue. You take fatigue. Yeah. Um, because it's a draw and you attacked, you break. Okay. And so I move back short. short. Okay, so the Norman uh, Warlord has broken through the Viking lines and is, I think, making a break for freedom. <laughs> so uh, there he goes. And, uh, right, okay. So, okay, so the Norman's second action for this unit is to charge in. And the Vikings have used one of the dice, uh, sorry, one fatigue, drop them down to threes. And uh, the Normans have hit with five. So let's see if the uh, particularly robust unit up till now. Uh, still not too bad, too dead. And but there were seven of them, so and now I'm hitting on threes. Uh, so that is five saves to make for the Normans, and they lose, lose three. three. So they actually lose the combat and bounce again and take a fatigue. Viking turn four battle board. Okay, so the Vikings chasing down the Norman Warlord. Um, Viking Warlords run after them as well, and then with We Obey, Poppin Njord has uh, pushed the Bondi in to fight the Warlord. Uh, the Bondi are going to be using Frigg and Thor, so any sixes will count as doubles, and they'll get three extra attacks. Hits on the Warlord. Oh. He does take two. Okay, so you can bounce those onto fatigue. Um, so, yeah, that's a drawback of me using them. So he's got two, two fatigue. fatigue. Okay, so Norman turn five, and unfortunately, he's rolled Yahtzee. So <laughs> let's see where he puts these on the board. Okay, so this is what he's gone for. Two knight activations, or half guard activations, two sergeant activations, and superiority. So let's see how that all plays out. Okay, so first action, uh, the half guard with 200 weapons have moved around the side of the hovel. And the next activation was the Norman warriors charging into the Bondi. So let's see how that goes. So Aedes decided to pop superiority. Um, which removes the fatigue off of the Vikings but gives them two auto hits. Uh, the Vikings in turn take the fatigue off of the Normans to drop their defence by one or give them plus one to hit. Okay, so two, uh, five for the Normans. Uh, they only managed one hit, but they did get the two from superiority. So the uh, Vikings having to save on fours with three, and they save all of them, unfortunately, for the Normans. So Normans inflict no casualties at all. 
Uh, three, six, seven attacks from the Vikings. Hitting on threes. Not that great. Four. And then 80 to save. And fortunately, two of the Normans fall. Which, uh, not good news for that, as they have now fallen back. Next action sees the Norman Hearthguard charge in on a second activation into the Vikings. Uh, neither side can pop any abilities, so it's just straight roll off. So both sides use fatigue to uh, drop the defence by one. And uh, so the Vikings will be hitting on threes. Unfortunately, though, the Danes, uh, sorry, the Normans with the Dane axes, will be hitting on twos with eight dice. So, and seven hits. So seven saves for the Vikings. And they are been quite robust so far this game. So let's see how uh, how they fare. Not very well at all, so that's uh, that's really bad for the Vikings. That that is a total of six casualties. Okay, so Viking return attack though. They had seven uh, in the unit, and they are hitting on threes because they use the half guard for two. Only three. So a decent save roll by AD here will uh, really come in use and oh no oh dear so three half guard die so the half guard do win the combat um, but unfortunately now are very much combat ineffective going into the end of the towards the end of the game okay so end of the Norman turn we have a fully healthy warrior unit here just two guys left in this half guard unit, three in that warrior unit, one lonely half guard there, another lonely half guard there, and the Norman warlord on the crest of the hill. Okay, so here we are, Viking turn five, having rolled the battle board. We've gone for one on Frigg. Um, other than that, Vikings desperately need to try and take that um, Norman warlord down as he's. Uh, gone to the objective to try and secure a win uh, for, the, for the Normans can the Vikings do it and hold off I mean there could in theory be a sixth turn um, Vikings can't uh, rely on that so uh, here we go so up on the hill uh, the uh, Bondi have uh, activated twice effectively once through the own and once on the we obey to charge into the Norman warlord and they're gonna pop Frigg and remove one of their own fatigue dropping them down to one. So the Norman uh, is gonna use one fatigue to drop them down to threes to hit and the Bondi are gonna rely on not using any fatigue of the Norman Let's see how this plays out. The Norman Knight, or Norman Warlord should I say, is going to be hitting on three with eight dice. Uh, not too bad, six. So we'll defend those. And they managed to block two. So four of the Vikings fall. Okay, but can they take the knight down? So it's a total of six attacks. Hitting on, uh, really on, hitting on fives. Only the one. Can the normal survive it? He does. So he stays on top of the hill. So he's now heavily fatigued, but he is still there. Could be a clash of the warlords coming up. 
Okay, the moment to decide the game. The two warlords face off. The Vikings only have one activation left on a unit of warriors. So it's all down to this combat. And where we have turn six. Okay, both me and my AD have decided not to use each other's fatigues as we're going to go for a straight kill here, see if we can uh, actually take each other down. We may end up both dying, but uh, let's see what happens. So, fives for the Normans. And not one five is rolled. Fives for the Vikings. Five. <laughs> uh, there's no fatigue left on that Norman, so uh, I've got a feeling through sheer exhaustion this could be the end of the Norman. And that is the end of the Norman Warlord. Okay, so the last action of the turn was for this unit here to rest, removing the fatigue. It's now to see if there is a turn six or whether that's going to be the end of this battle. So let's have a look. And there is going to be a turn six, so that's probably not necessarily good news for the Normans, um, as their uh, strike for victory um, has failed, and they don't have a huge amount of bodies left. So, uh, let's see what AD can do now, now his warlord is uh, unfortunately in the dirt. Okay, so turn six battle board, and final turn for the Normans. So one in superiority, uh, rest mainly activating the hearth guard and one into the warriors. Okay, so double move on the last two-handed Norman. Send some scurrying back to sit on the objective, marked as A. The last half guard action is for the two half guard to charge into the Bondi, try and put some more damage on them and try and secure um, or to ensure that there's no chance of the uh, Vikings getting to B. And they will pop superiority, so they remove a fatigue from the enemy unit which guarantees two hits. So I'll mark those just there. And then they get four dice in combat. And they're looking for fours. The Vikings will pop their fatigue and drop their defense. Uh, so two successes. In actual fact, it's four because they have the plus two for superiority. And the Vikings defense, two go down. So that leaves at least three left in that unit. So it would be hit on fives down to fours because of the fatigue. Only one hit, which unfortunately does result in a Norman death. So Norman soldiers there in the uh, uneven ground, rested to remove the fatigue, give them a little bit more survivability. It's not going to affect the game, uh, but just from a moral point of view. Uh, so we've got one healthy unit of warriors for left for the Normans so far, and then it's just a handful of troops. What can the Vikings do in their turn? Final turn, battle board for the Vikings. Okay, so the Vikings' last attempt. Effectively, all the activations on the warriors, sending them through the ground. They popped Frigg to remove a fatigue in combat. They've popped Asgard to remove fatigue as, uh, as they enter in on the charge. So they're carrying one fatigue into the combat, which the Norman player is using to increase their defense. The uh, Vikings are going to be using Valhalla on a B, uh, which 
means that uh, they gain three extra attack dice and they can remove up to three models but they only get three attacks each, uh, so they only got eight attacks so in essence they can't get the full nine because you can't double your attacks or more than double your attacks so they're going to remove two warriors in fact thinking about it I remove all three because it doesn't matter whether they die or not they need to wipe that unit out to wipe that unit out will mean that they don't score the objective so it doesn't matter if mine die so effectively I'm going to lose three guys however I will gain three attacks per figure so that will be nine attacks there plus the remaining five so it's 14 attacks so 14 attacks but I'm hitting on fives I need a great roll simple as that and it's not going to be enough. The Vikings have only managed five hits. Uh, in the end, probably should have gone for Thor, because the amount of sixes I rolled, they would have doubled. So, um, also, it still obviously comes down to uh, the Normans managing to uh, make the saves. And in actual fact, they only lose one. One Norman dies. In return, The Normans have eight attacks, hitting on fours, uh, which is only three, and the Vikings lose two more. And with that final withdrawal, which unfortunately puts them straight back on the objective, that ends the game. So, um, and the result is a clear draw. Um, Warlord for the Vikings, Earl Ragnar is sitting on Objective D, two left in the Warrior unit there, Vikings Berserkers fell back to secure E, Levy sat on uh, effectively what would be um, F. Viking unit of three guys left there, another Viking unit of one guy there, and another unit of Vikings just in the rough ground there. The Normans, they did actually uh, take quite a bit more casualties than the Vikings, uh, not too much, it evened itself out towards the end as the Vikings had to throw bodies forward, try and uh, either defend against the, the Norman charge through the line. Um, but they have one half guard soldier there, another half guard soldier at the back there, three men in that unit, um, relatively healthy unit over there, just uh, just the one casualty, and one more half guard defending the objective over the back there. Uh, notable casualties though, Norman uh, Duke. Unfortunately, fell. Um, he made a bold attempt at victory and uh, doing a multiple charge through the Viking lines that nearly came off and uh, really sort of at least secured the draw. If they hadn't have done that, they may have got overwhelmed in the middle. Um, so, ballsy play by AD there. And um, Overall, as I say, uh, casualty pile is uh, fairly similar, so we've got quite a few Viking dead, and probably actually, maybe similar, um, in fact actually probably a little bit less on the Normans actually body wise, but uh, a lot more hearth guard and obviously the warlord died. So there we have it. Um, neither side managed to uh, really secure it, uh, the Vikings had a couple of opportunities, uh, but the speed of the Normans made the difference really. Okay, there we have it. So I hope you enjoyed that. Right then guys, so, um, well, there we have it. Uh, unfortunately, Aedes <laughs> had to run. Uh, I don't know why I've stopped play. <laughs> what can you do? Right, so, um, yeah, effectively Aedes' plan was uh, draw my force in and uh, then try and break my lines with his cavalry, which nearly did work. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, meant that I had to uh, 
to a fighting uh, fallback and <laughs> try and survive the game. Um, made a bit of a bold attempt on the uh, to try and steal it back in the last turn, uh, which didn't really work because the um, the terrain really um, the objective was well placed. Um, literally sat behind a big clump of uh, rough ground which made getting to it very difficult and um, that really sort of uh, helped out the Normans so obviously with the Normans knowing the territory uh, that sort of worked for them and they managed to uh, use the terrain to their advantage and the uh, speed of their uh, you know, um, guys on horseback basically and it nearly paid off for them because it could have been, uh, could have been a very different tale um, and again, equally, Vikings failing to just finish off the half guard units, um, allowing them, you know, with the one guy, especially in this scenario where they could basically just fall back, still generating dice, and uh, sit on the objective. They just didn't have the speed um, to really sort of try and get all the way across. I mean, one of the objectives was very close to his uh, baseline, and uh, yeah, effectively, the only the only Norman that broke the broke the halfway line really uh, was his cavalry the first lot failed miserably and uh, got hammered and then retreated back licking their wounds and then the warlord broke the line other than that uh, the vikings held uh, just didn't have uh, the mobility in the end uh, to uh, seize the day so i uh, hope you enjoyed that uh, if you did please do subscribe and uh, we are going to be bringing you lots more side content and um, also age of magic and uh, yeah hopefully uh, Subscribe, any comments, feel free to leave them behind. And uh, equally, if you like the battle report, please do like and share. Um, it's important for us to obviously keep, uh, keep plugging away and uh, try and bring you the best quality reports we can. And we're always looking to improve, so there we go. All right, thank you very much for watching. And on behalf of AD, uh, we'll see you again.